Okay, hey, welcome to the Positive Pomona Production Studios. Uh, we are here live with the Pomona Promise Network podcast. And I am the host, Andrew Quinones. And today in studio, we have guest Reverend Jan Chase of Unity of Pomona. Welcome, Reverend Jan Chase. Thank you, Andy. It's great to be here. Your technical expertise is quite amazing today. Oh, I couldn't do it without a team. And, and so for those who are listening in, uh, this is uh, the, the first interviews of our podcast series for the Pomona Promise. And we're here in downtown Pomona off of 4th Street. And uh, fortunately, I've been able to receive some grant funding that has allowed me to purchase all the equipment that, that is needed to create this uh, podcast studio. And, and the mission is, you know, or the vision at least is uh, that we're going to be able to interview uh, people in service throughout our community and perhaps Southern California to share the good news with, uh, with, with everyone in the community. The next Huel Hauser. Oh, and <laughs> Huel Hausner. And again, for those who don't know Huel Hausner, he, he, uh, he was a host on PBS called California Gold with Huel Hausner. Yes, visiting with Huel. And, 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 and I'm glad you remember that because he's one of my, uh, I guess, uh, virtual mentors, my heroes. I, I just appreciated him uh, over the years growing up because I could always turn into PBS and learn something yes, about California. Absolutely. Yeah. So. And now you're doing that work. Uh, yes. Well, I guess so. Uh, maybe one day I'll, I, I get to adventure out of the studio, but for at least for now, uh, I have the honor of interviewing awesome people within our community, such, such as people like yourself. So now, Jan, uh, you know, we've known each other for a few years now. Yes, we and have. And we've worked closely together on a number of projects. And uh, I'm just so happy to be to be your friend. And uh, and I just appreciate you so much. And, and I want uh, the world to know uh, the, what, you, uh, what you're involved in and, 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 and how you make a difference in our community. So, uh, well, first, tell us a little bit about Unity Church uh, and what you do there. And then we'll move to Compassionate Pomona. This month, I... Will have been at Unity for 20 years. Now, now, where, what, what is Unity? I guess Unity is an international spiritual movement that uh, has churches in some places, study groups in other places, has silent Unity uh, in Can right outside of Kansas City, uh, which is a, a prayer center. Um, we put on spiritual retreats. There's just all kinds of spiritual work that is done and spiritual education that is done. And, and originally, Unity started in 1889 as by the Fillmores, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, through a spiritual healing. And they had this vision. They began studying spirituality, and they found that there was truth that ran through all the religions of the world. Mm -hmm. And they began to read scriptures from many religions of the world and meet people. They went to the first parliament of the world's religions. They, they saw that they took uh, the truth that they found in different religions and put it all together and simplified it to create what we now know as unity. Yes. So for me, that whole interfaith flavor is very important in a world that's so divided mm -hmm. for us to realize that there's a oneness that underlies all of that, and that oneness can be seen in the truth in our scriptures. Uh, it helps bring us into a centered, peaceful place. And I think the whole world needs to be centered in peace these days. That's right. That's right. Now, Jen, how long have you been in this work of, 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 of spirituality and, 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 and change making through? My whole life. Your whole life, huh? <laughs> My whole life. Yeah. But I've been a minister since 2000. Okay. So I, I, it's second career. I was a medical technologist before I, I got the call when I was 12 years old. But, okay. you know, sometimes life takes you in directions that you don't necessarily want to go, but practically taking care of family, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Why, why don't you give the audience a quick little snapshot about the life of Jan Chase? And, you know, you started off, I believe, in Kansas City, Missouri. I raised my family. Well, I started off, I was, I was raised in Topeka, Kansas. Topeka, Kansas, okay. And, and my mother was very involved in community work. In fact, she would be going to meetings all the time. She was, I guess, I, there's a part of her that's in me. Yes. And... She then ran for leg the legislature once the kids, her three daughters, were out of the house and in college. And, uh, 
and served for 10 years in the Kansas legislature. Oh, wow. She was a, a real intel, very intelligent woman and um, made a big difference, uh, mm. kind of led women, women's movements around in, throughout Kansas, made some changes. What so, an inspiration. Yeah, she was. So after, uh, after I guess, your, your childhood and teenage years, uh, where did you move to in your, in your 20s? So after college, I went to, uh, uh, well, actually, we went to Kansas City. I got married, okay. lived in Kansas City a few years, and then we w- joined the Peace Corps, ah. lived in Venezuela. Okay, Venezuela. Actually came to California to do language training and Peace Corps training, and then we went to Venezuela for a year teaching. And my husband was in, uh, in a group that was going out into the barrios to find athletic talent for the Pan American Games that were coming up. Oh, wow. So that was very exciting. And so, you know, we, we became global citizens. When you live in, in a country outside of the U.S., you begin to see the world through a different lens. Uh-huh. And you begin to see that um, uh, although America is wonderful, there is wonderful things about every place in the world. That's right. And people are all the same, <laughs> all wonderful, so amazing. After Venezuela, you went to? Africa. Africa. <laughs> that, yeah. How many years did you spend in Africa? Two years in Africa. Two years in, in Africa. Huh? Zambia. And Zambia. loved it. <laughs> loved Africa. Yeah. And then we came home and started our family uh-huh. <clears throat> and lived in Council Bluffs, Iowa. That's where my husband got a job. And I began working in hospitals there as a medical t- technology medical technologist, and we raised our two children, Benjamin, and then two years later, we had Amelia. And uh, so, uh, and then when they grew up, when they went away to college, then I applied to become a minister and went to Kansas, moved to Kansas City to get my degree uh, so that I could be a unity minister. Wonderful. Well, Uh, Well, thank you for sharing that part of your your life with us. Uh, We're going to take a quick little station break, and then we'll be right back to hear more about your work with Compassionate Pomona. Okay. All right. All right. This uh, this podcast was brought to you by Unity Church and Compassionate Pomona with Reverend Jan Chase and uh, the Southern California Service Corps with Andrew Quinones. We'll be right back uh, with more. Okay, we're back with uh, Reverend Jan Chase of Unity Pomona and the host of Compassionate Pomona. And uh, we're going to spend uh, the next segment learning all about uh, what Compassionate Pomona is all about and how it got started here in the city of Pomona. So, Jan, uh, give us the background. What is Compassionate Pomona and how did it get started? Compassionate Pomona is, is one of about 440 cities that globally that have worked with grassroots movements, city movements, uh, and different aspects of the city to really focus on the heart, to focus on how do the decisions that we make as a community affect people and affect their lives, and how can we make decisions more consciously not just about how much things cost or um, what gives me power, but about how can we work together and involve and work for the good of, of everybody mm-hmm. and, and really grow our sense and our understanding of what compassion is. Yes. So h- how did you learn about the Compassionate Cities Movement? So 26 interfaith friends from uh, this area— went to the Parliament of the World's Religions in 2015. And while we were there, we actually presented there about our interfaith work. We kept hearing about compassionate cities, compassion games. And so we went to these other workshops and came back really determined to create throughout our valley compassionate cities. 
Pomona was the first. We worked two and a half years. We had meetings every month, and then we had meetings with our mayor, meetings with our city council people. Our mayor said, I'll be, uh, we can all be a compassionate city if you work with the PUSD, our school district, as well. So we talked to the school board and went to school board meetings, and, and everybody signed on. It took two and a half years, and April 2nd, 2000, no, yeah, 2018, mm-hmm. yes. we officially became a compassionate city. And, and what does that mean for a city like Pomona? I think what it means is that we shift who we think we are. You know, what you think you are has a lot to do with how you act. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so by shifting our consciousness around our own city, we gain a lot of pride. Mm-hmm. We, we begin to see that there is a lot of people that have for a long time have been very compassionate. Mm-hmm. And we begin to draw them together. We begin to support each other. We begin, instead of competing for work or things to do, we begin supporting each other's work. And, and so it, it just everybody is boosted and the city is boosted and then the, the, the energy shifts. Now, uh, Compassionate City has been around in Pomona since 2018. Can you give, maybe give us some highlights of some of the, the, the things that they've done uh, over these past, again, it's 2023 now, so I, it's, it's been about five years. Uh, what are some of the things that, that just stand out most to you about the work that you've done? Well, interestingly, it, we, we live in a society and in a world that tends to be very divided. Mm. And so one of the first things we did was we worked with our city manager, Linda Lowry, to create a, what do you call it? A list of respectful language Mm -hmm. and respectful listening at city meetings. Yes. So when people came together, they were asked to listen and speak in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And now we've done that again this year for our our. Um, PUSD, our school Mm -hmm. district, for their meetings because people can get upset with each other and forget Mm. uh, who they are. And so it it just sets a tone. So that was the first thing that we did. Yes, yes. And and then we began, we had yard signs. uh, Sorry, welcoming neighbors in in various languages, yes. Exactly. Exactly. But one of the biggest things that we've done, and you've been in charge of that, Andy, and that has been our... our um, Kindness Carnival. Kindness Carnival. That's Got right my on. brain. <laughs> yeah, our Kindness Carnival that we've had two now, one each year. Yes. And last year, this last fall, we did one downtown, mm-hmm. and it drew 5,000 people, more people than had ever come to any event as far as I know, certainly in the downtown area. Yes. Uh, so it was very successful. We had 35 service organizations signed up to be uh, participate in it and to give resources to the community, to give gifts to the community, to give raffles to the community. We had music. We had just a lot of things going on, and it was it was wonderful. Yes, it was, huh? It was. That's great. And so... Um, as we're moving into the 2023 year, um, what goals do you s- would like to accomplish, you think, this year for Compassionate Pomona? Well, several things have come out of Compassionate Pomona. We've had a, an, initially, we had several conferences. Mm-hmm. And at one of those conferences, actually at both of those conferences, Azim Kamisa came and spoke. And he began to talk about restorative practices. Mm-hmm. And so we have had a restorative practice team in the city since then that many of us work with. And now I was just on a meeting this morning with the Charter for Compassion, which is like our mothership, and they're asking Pomona to highlight uh, and and do a presentation on what we are doing in our city for uh, restorative practices, restorative justice. So it's even though we're not nearly where we want to be, we've started a lot of things and a lot of things are happening. And unfolding, so it's very exciting to see that what we have been doing now is going to be helping and modeling for other cities in the world. Yes. 
Okay, Jan. Well, we're going to take a quick little break, a little station break, and we'll be right back with Jan Chase to learn more about Compassionate Pomona and Compassionate Cities and the, the great work we're doing throughout our communities and the world. Okay, we're back. Uh, I'm the host, Andrew Quinones, and today we have in studio Jan Chase, uh, Reverend of Unity of Pomona Truth here in Pomona, and the host with the most of CompassionateCitiesPomona.org. So Jan, uh, we've learned a little bit about Compassionate Cities. Uh, I'm curious to know about some of the, the players uh, within this Compassionate Cities movement and, 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 and how they tie in uh, to the bigger picture. So you had shared a name just a minute ago, uh, uh, the name Azim Kamisa. Yes. And I'm sure a lot of people don't know who he is out there. I am fascinated with the story. So uh, can you please just share a little bit about Azim Kamisa and, and the work he's done? So Azim is a, he was a businessman, a world banker, until his son that was in college was killed by a 14-year-old gang member. Tony. And that changed Azim's life. And he began to see that when he heard the news of his son's death, he realized that there were victims on both ends of the gun. Mm -hmm. And so it not only was his son a victim, but Tony had been a victim of society. And he decided that he was, he felt really led to stop kids from killing kids. And so he started programs of restorative justice, restorative practices in schools throughout San Diego County. So from what I understand, uh, Azim Kamisa, he actually visited Tony, the, the murder of his son, in jail uh, to try to come to some type of uh, resolution or, or to, 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 to... To do forgiveness. To, to do forgiveness. Yeah. And, and within that meeting... Um, his heart really tr transformed to, to forgiveness rather than holding in the anger and the pain uh, yes, of, yes. His, of his son's death, yes? Yes. And so um, I tell you, some of the greatest stories uh, that ever come across this earth are, are stories of forgiveness, yes? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. He looked for the murderer and he saw, you know, this human being in, right. in there. And, uh, he, and he works with Tony. Now Tony is out. It's been 20, past 25 years of his sentence. And he, Tony is helping with this work right. now. So, so it, it, for audience, I mean, you, you guys got to get this. I mean, this, I'm a father now. I have a, a couple of boys. I can only imagine if, if somebody took the life of my son, how angry I would be and how difficult it would be for me to forgive and for, for someone to accomplish that forgiveness. But not only accomplish the forgiveness, but, but help others along the way that are also experienced great suffering within their life to also find a path to forgiveness. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that, that is a story of compassion, right? And, it and, is and, big and, compassion. Right. And, and I think those type of stories really will help maybe transform our communities to be more forgiving uh, for all the mistakes we make as human beings, huh? It takes us into a whole new paradigm, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. That does. So who else, uh, who, who else, tell me about some other people that are in the Compassionate uh, Cities movement uh, that really <sighs> shine right now. Well, we have, Linda Lowry was our city manager, mm -hmm. and she was at, at almost all the meetings. And when she retired now, she comes and she uh, is a leader, and she takes the minutes, she takes the notes for us, and she does other things too. But to have her, we have Roberta Perlman, who is the president uh, of our school board, and she's very involved, in, and our district is involved, and we have um, Christana Walks Harper. Uh, sometimes we have the superintendent of schools. We have, uh, sometimes we have counselors. We also have people from Sky Breathing that oh, come. Oh, why don't you share, <laughs> since, since you had mentioned Sky Breathing, now yeah. I think this is something... That will, can really change the world for the better. Absolutely. Uh, share a little bit about Sky Breathing and, and, and how Compassionate Pomona is involved in that. So, again, uh, someone came and began to share uh, and in introduced me. I think it was Roberta Perlman 
and said, Jan, there's someone I think you should meet. And she brought in Pramila. Pramila Agarwal is a physician that had brought, and her story is she had depression. And she took a course in sky breathing and her depression lifted. Mm. And she was so amazed by the power of the breath that we all have mm -hmm. a tools to use. And so she wanted the kids in our school district and she just hounded our school district until for years until they got more and more of it in the schools. And now we have, uh, it's being used in many of our schools and the, the kids from preschool all the way through high school, many of them have access now to the tool of their own breath to regulate mm. uh, their emotions and, and to help them understand and control their mind as well. Right. So it's, it's just a powerful tool, and it's helped me. I, it's a practice that I not only do every day, but that I am in progress of learning how to be a trainer. Yes. To be a teacher of this, this amazing work. So a, a little bit of background. Uh, Sky uh, stands for Sri Kriya Yoga, and it's an ancient uh, science that has been here on the earth for thousands of years. And it's a science of the breath, from what I understand. Uh, I read a book many years ago called Autobiography of the Yogi. Yeah, that was it had a great influence on, on my outlook on life. And I I practice uh, sky breathing, and it has been a, a great force within my life to find uh, peace within the center. Yes? Yes, absolutely. And so um, I think that's one of the, the, the things that we have a goal uh, for Pomona, that, again, more children will have access to this, this great uh, training so they, they could grow up to be uh, great adults that have uh, emotional control, uh, less stress, less anxiety, less depression, uh, but are, are able to lead healthy lives just from learning how to breathe in a good way, huh? And, and not only kids, but... Again, having kids, their parents, so that their parents, you know, kids learn from their parents. Yes. So if the parents learn this, then the kids going to be, uh, uh, the kids and the parents will be on the same page. Yes. And the teachers, we want the teachers to learn this as well. So it's like, and we want our community. In fact, we just have this vision of everyone in our community having the option of learning this. And I've been talking to Tri-City Mental Health now about having this for their their staff. Uh -huh. Because anybody that's in a high-stress job, and that's most of us, yes. um, this is really helpful. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing uh, so much about, about sky breathing and compassionate cities and compassionate Pomona. And also a little bit about your history on, on, on how Jan Chase came to Pomona uh, and, and the path that, that, that she took. Oh, I'd have something. Can oh, I share something absolutely. else? A couple other things. One, the way I found this town. Yes. Uh, P-Town. P-Town. Uh, there was a Unity Church ad. At that time, it was not digital. It was in a, something printed. And I saw a light. Mm around it. Mm -hmm. That's how I chose to come and to try out to be the minister here. And Spirit whispered to me to have them sing, we can be, we can build a beautiful city, which is a song from Godspell. Now, I had no idea about this work that I would be doing and doing with you and doing with people like you, Andy. And, and yet, that is exactly what we're doing. And our mayor he has, you know, he always talks about building a beautiful city. Yes. And it began with him with picking up trash, you know, and having people help him go around the city and pick up trash. And so we, there are many ways to build a beautiful city, and, and that's, we're all a part of that in our own way. The other thing is there are lots of, of nonprofit groups that are involved in Compassionate Pomona. It started off being interfaith groups interfaith people, people of many faith traditions, but it's become more of a conglomeration of uh, different, and individuals, mm -hmm. uh, different organizations, different individuals, all working together, uh, 
and and really making a difference. Great, great. Now, Jen, uh, as we kind of wrap up things, can you share uh, with the community how uh, they could get connected either with Unity of Pomona or Compassion of Pomona? Absolutely. So you can always reach out to me. My email address is Jan Hoshin, J-A-N-H-O-S-H-I-N at AOL.com. I'm an old, been there a long time. <laughs> uh, or you can look on our websites. Andy helps me with both of our websites, uh, compassionatepomona.org <laughs> and unityofpomona.org. And so look at, at those and find ways to, to connect. And you're all invited to, to come to, to either to join us. And, and when does Compassionate Pomona uh, meet? So if anybody's interested in joining the Zoom call, uh, when, when, can, when, did, when is a good time for them to do that? The first and third Thursdays of the month uh, in the morning. Uh, 945 for the first Thursday of the month because we spend a little more time getting to know each other personally. And at 10 o'clock on the second Thursday of the month when we spend a little more time uh, inviting people to come and share what they do in a little more depth and doing some planning of the events and, and things that we're doing. All right. So, yeah. And it's usually about an hour and a half meeting. Okay. Well, Jan... Chase, Reverend Jan Chase, I, I just really, truly appreciate you, and I thank you for being our special guest on today's podcast. Uh, I look forward to seeing you out in the community and continue the, the good work that we do. And uh, is there any, any parting words that you would like to, to uh, share with our city of Pomona or parting thoughts? My parting thoughts are I just feel so blessed to live in this city. It is a city that truly is compassionate, and it is a city that the cities around us look to and want to be like. And as they see the compassion spread, they want that compassion to spread in their cities too. And so uh, the cities, many of the cities around us are working on becoming compassionate cities now, and some of them have been. So it's very exciting to be a leader. Yes, it is. Great times, huh? Great times. All Great right. people. It's all because of the people. That's right. You know, wonderful, heart-centered people. Heart-centered people. Now, if you want to become a heart-centered person like uh, Jan or myself, uh, you can definitely join us uh, here on the Pomona Promise Network broadcast, podcast. <laughs> so to hear all about the good news um, that's happening within our city and, and maybe even surrounding things within our area. So... Uh, we really appreciate you tuning in, and, and uh, we hope you enjoyed our, our conversation with our guest today. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to hear more content like this. And uh, we'll see you next time. So, peace. Bye, Pomona. Bye.